Hi, I'm Matt from ArcGSB, and welcome to our video series on data mapping, where I cover all of the features of the XML map connector. If you haven't already, please check out our mapping overview video for some important context on how to set up a mapping flow. Once your flow is set up, you can start applying the topics covered in this series. Since this is the first video in the series, we'll cover the basics, a brief recap of templates, then for each loops, then deleting excess nodes, and finally value to value mappings. The first step in any mapping is setting the source and destination templates. Source templates represent the XML structure of the data that we start with, and destination templates represent the XML structure of the data that we want to end up with. Once the templates are set, the XML structure of both the source and the destination are displayed here in the Visual Designer, and we can begin mapping the source onto the destination. XML templates can be uploaded directly here in the Settings panel, and the XML map connector can detect templates from adjacent connectors in the flow, like EDI connectors, CSV connectors, or database connectors. The Mapping Overview video provides more information on this automatic template detection. For each loops are the next step after the templates are configured. A for each loop means that repeated structures in the input results in repeated structures in the output. For example, if the input XML is customer data that may have one or more addresses associated with it, what we want to do is generate output XML for each address in the input. In the XML map designer, for each relationships can only be established between elements that are called parent elements, which means that they have children but no value. If I drag a parent in the source onto a parent in the destination, the resulting for each relationship means that each occurrence of the source element will result in a new occurrence of the destination element, including all of that destination element's children. Creating the right for each relationships requires an understanding of the data that you're working with, and specifically, what parts of that data might repeat a variable number of times. In this example, I'm mapping purchase order data to an outgoing EDI invoice, and I know that I need two for each relationships. First, each order should result in a new EDI transaction set. Then, each line item in the order should result in a new IT1 loop 1. Notice that the green X path for the IT1 loop 1 does not start with a slash and is relative to the for each mapping that it's inside of, namely the transaction set. Once I've established my for each loops, I can start deleting excess nodes in the output. To understand which nodes can be deleted, let's focus on this IT1 loop 1 in the destination. The for each loop that I established ensures that there are always the right amount of IT1 loop 1 structures in the output, namely, there will always be the same number as there are line items in my input. So, these other IT1 loop 1s are unnecessary, and I can delete them by simply right clicking them and selecting Delete Node. Note that your mapping might not have any excess nodes, and it depends on the destination template that you're using. Okay, so now the for each loops are done and excess nodes are deleted, and we can move on to the value to value mappings. Value to value means that the value in a source element will be inserted directly into a destination element. Value to value mappings can only be made between elements that are called leaf elements, which means that they have a value but no children. In this example, I know that the IT104 element in the destination should hold the price of a line item, so I can simply drag the price per unit element from the source to create this value to value mapping. Note again that the green X path for this mapping does not start with a slash, which means that it's relative to any X path that it's inside of. You can simply concatenate these three X paths to get the full path in the source document where the value is coming from. And that covers the basics in the XML map connector. Templates, for each loops, deleting excess nodes, and value mappings. We'll dig into the more advanced mapping features starting with the next video, where I'll talk about the expression editor. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources and a free trial of the application at archeosb.com.